And we're back and we're moving into our first conversation for this morning. We know that uh, by the end of this week, we officially kickstart the Atlantic hurricane season and it means that this is the time that we should all be prepared. And here to tell us all about the preparation for Belize City, we have representatives of the Belize City Council. We're joined by Mayor of Belize City, Bernard Wagner in the center, Deputy Mayor Oscar Arnold, and Councillor for Sanitation, SEMO Security, Flood Mitigation and Climate Change, Michael Norales. Good morning and welcome. Good morning again, Marlene. Yeah, good morning. morning. Yes. Good morning, Marlene. Good morning, Belize. Good morning, Belize. Um, glad to be here again. Um, and it's an important time of the year Absolutely. as the hurricane season draws near. So um, I'm going to look at some of the reports coming out of the Colorado State Mm. Um, university and um, they are predicting a below average mm -hmm. hurricane but nevertheless we still have to be um, prepared yeah. and our team at the city council the CIMO, has been doing all those preparations planning for yeah. months now and we feel that we are in a in a situation where we could certainly um, mitigate some of the um, hurricane um, things yeah. that would normally come along with a hurricane so I know the preparation at this time is looking at uh, the potential threat of storms and hurricanes, but given the context of how things have changed, especially in terms of our weather and the, and the climate, there are a lot of different vulnerabilities that we have now. Last year we saw the tsunami scare, uh, yeah. one that we were very unprepared for um, in Belize City. Uh, there's always the risk of floods flooding, from flooding. Uh, just a depression or sometimes just over overnight rains. Yeah, fire. Yeah, fire. Um, we've seen quite a number of, of activities that can be classified as emergency or disaster per, um, situations. So let me talk about how you categorize them and what your preparations are. Well, Marlene, again, the first thing um, in respect of preparation um, from the city council vantage point, mm -hmm. we have done extensive, extensive um, drainage, and canal cleaning and if you would notice over the past months we have been doing the North Creek Canal, mm -hmm. we did the South Creek Canal, Zetong Canals, the East Scarlet Canal, West Scarlet Canal, all of those canals um, um, alleviate flooding mm -hmm. and we felt that um, this um, exercise had, hasn't been done for quite some time and uh, when we look at the, uh, for, for instance, Zetong Canal um, that canal has a six foot depth and when we went in there five feet of it was sludge mm -hmm. the water just flowing on the top so we did some extensive work on yeah. all those canals so we should see mm -hmm. uh, a big difference in respect to when the rainy season starts um, yeah. um, you should see uh, much lesser flooding of the city and yeah. um, we have ensured that the connection of the drainage to the canals are flowing properly so um, from the city council vantage point, we have done some extensive work in all the um, major canals in the area, the Gungulung canals, mm -hmm. the canals in the Bella Vista, uh, um, in the, in the, the um, Belama area has been dredged as well. Mm -hmm. so, also, that's, go ahead. also, if I can chime in, um, the, the entire culture has been, there's been a transformation from the CMO at the city council from being a one-dimensional organization, mm -hmm. um, only having uh, influence or, or having specific things when it comes to hurricane, because like you rightly said, um, marsh casualty events as well um, is also another disaster that we've been preparing for. Um, the tsunami is a new one, fires in the city when, when we have a lot of cluster buildings together. Yeah. So that whole culture has been transformed. Um, and as Chippy and his Councillor Norales, sorry, and his team <laughs> knows that disaster management and disaster preparedness is, is year round. Yeah. So while the hurricane season is June to November, and, and even though we are have a, a, or we're predicted to have a below average season, one hurricane can change the dynamics and change the landscape of the city. Of course. And we understand that. Yeah. So the, the, the CMO team there and, and the other subcommittees that are attached to that, mm -hmm. along with the committees from NEMO, work year round. They're, they're always in a constant state of, of flux and change and trying to improve on, on the efficiencies that we've been put in, putting in place. Yeah, yeah. So, Councillor, tell me a bit about uh, how CIMO has been preparing. Well, 
ever since uh, the hurricane season finished last week, last uh, November, we have been having meetings every month. Mm -hmm. We have 13 subcommittees, and they meet once a month, and they report to, to us. Mm -hmm. They report to the mayor, uh, Mr. I mean, the deputy mayor and, and, and I. Mm -hmm. uh, we make sure that whatever contingencies there are to change, we deal with it. Mm -hmm. We uh, liaise with NEMO on a daily basis. Uh, nightly basis if you don't mind because whenever something comes up the national coordinator wastes, he wastes no time he would call uh, two o'clock one o'clock in the morning why we need to do certain things can we meet tomorrow morning mm -hmm. the mayor is always willing to allow us to be there yeah. uh, the each committee have a co-chair and uh, a counselor is also in charge of that committee so the council is very much involved yeah. with uh with 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 simo because simo is not only the two or three people within the department mm -hmm. simo is the entire city council you see we are the first responders so we need to see what's on the ground first then we inform the national coordinator and then uh, the whole uh, national emergency management organization kicks in yeah right but we are always ready uh i was asked a question the other day are you ready well the only thing i can say is yes because each committee, they have been so active, they have been so proactive that sometimes um, we, we would send uh, something to the mayor, Mr. Mayor, we need money for this boy again. You know, <laughs> but that's because, and then when we explain it, when we justify the thing, the man says, oh, very good, let's do it. But as far as I'm concerned, Simo is ready, along with Nemo. Yes, yeah. we are. So the, the, the monthly meetings have been held, the subcommittees have up, uh, upgraded and, and improved their, standing, their mm -hmm. standard operating procedures. Yeah. Um, we've updated the hurricane plan, plan because that right. is, like I said, this is in a constant state, a change. Yeah. Um, shelter inspections have been done mm -hmm. along That's with right. NEMA personnel. Yeah. Uh, the emergency organizi uh, organization training has been held. We've had a, an EOC training, which is the operation center, which is yeah. the yeah. nerve cell. Nerve, nerve of whenever cell, yeah. there's, a, there's a storm or there's a threat, coming into the into the area mm -hmm. um that is the nerve cell that, that does all the planning all the preparation yeah. all the execution so that has been done as well uh, first, first, aid. first aid training yeah, for shelter managers Fantastic. shelter manager training have been going yeah. on mm -hmm. um evacuation route they have been adjusted in the city yeah. again to to kind of veer away from those areas that would be that that would be flooded yeah. mm -hmm. or areas where regular citizens <coughs> um who would evacuate on their own would be using so yeah, those those evacuation routes have been upgraded yeah. so while we not have one media darling where every week they toot their horn the city council no, along with the mayor working. have been hard at work well i have a question and, and i think councillor uh, you touched on it in terms of having to tap into the resources to get the work done we know that drainage in the city is a costly mm -hmm. effort. It means you have to dredge out the canals. You have to ensure that people are literally clearing out all the drains, uh, whether it's overgrown or whatever it is yeah. that is clogging it up. And it takes a lot of manpower, but it takes a lot of resources yeah. as well, financial resources. How have you been able to, to, to get sufficient funds to be able to do so? I'll tell you, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good question, Mayor, because that's one of the... Because you're begging for more money right now. That's, that's one of the projects that Councillor Van and myself, we sat down, we got the engineers, to, just before the mayor speaks, because you need to know the history of how we came about with this. Mm -hmm. Because we had to go to Carcass to discuss it. Mm -hmm. And when we, but we brought it to the mayor first, and they said, boy, this thing will cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But we, we need to do it, because if we don't do it, then the city will be flooded. So we had to work like in the reverse order, clear the outlets, and then we work our way back to the, to yeah. the main drains. Yeah, it's, it's part of being um, proactive, Marlene. Um, the, 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 the fact is that they have this flood mitigation project mm -hmm. funded by IDB, run right. through the Ministry of Works. Um, we couldn't wait for that to materialize. <coughs> they, 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 um, from what I gathered, they had funding to carry out the dredging of these same canals, canals that we did. Yeah. We couldn't wait. Similarly to the Yabra, yes. when we took office, the Yabra, you couldn't, the water wasn't flowing. Mm -hmm. We have addressed that issue. Water is flowing clearly <coughs> out, out to the sea now. The boats are back um, in. When we started the dredging project at the North Creek, the Zetong, the South Creek, the East Canal, the West Canal, um, the people from IDB mm -hmm. and the Ministry of Works came out and said, this mayor and this council is working, but these we had funds allocated to carry out these projects. 
So now they are looking back at us to say, let us meet, see how we can reimburse the council for the great work that we have been doing. Mm. And, and that is a part we can't sit and wait for, for, for funding to come. We, we, need to material, we need to ensure that these projects materialize as quickly as possible. And they were priority areas because the residents in the areas, yeah. when, when, when the, works on, and the works are ongoing, mm -hmm. they have told us, listen, we haven't seen this in 14, 15 yeah, years. Yeah, uh, right. Um, and, and, and these are priority issues, though. Well, I was going to say, I mean, you, you prioritize an issue that has been pretty much the Achilles heel of, of any city council that comes in because drainage is costly and drainage takes a lot of resources, exactly. but it's, and it's most and it's important. Not a, and it's not a sexy yes, topic. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, sludge in a canal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but moving forward from that, because I think when we talk about uh, how Belize City and the flood prone areas of Belize City, um, and you talk about all this drainage, the perception is that, you know, a rain is going to come and nobody's going to have to get their feet wet beyond when the rain falls. Mm -hmm. um, is that what you're looking at? Or is it simply to get it to run off as quickly as possible? I, I think the latter, um, the latter. We, we, are, we are a city that um, everyone knows is below sea level. So we are figuring that um, at least the maintenance part of our um, work should be completed and we should ensure that we do our part as a council. Mm -hmm. We know we could never, um, with rising sea um, waters, mm -hmm. you, you could never come out uh, and say that you, you will stop flooding yeah. um, once you are below sea level. But we are certain that the maintenance plan that we have put in place will um, have some great returns and, for the city. And, and just to justify previous expenditure by previous councils, and, and the government of Belize, because there's that canal that was put in below Douglas Jones, mm -hmm. there's also the canal on Princess Margaret mm -hmm. Drive. Yeah. But then yeah. the investment, the money, the millions of dollars that were spent on these, and they're not being, they're not being utilized because they're clogged up. Mm. So the maintenance yeah. plan that the mayor spoke of was, was very important. Mm -hmm. um, and as we, you go doing that, you find other issues that you must remedy as you go yes. along. Um, drains that, that hit dead end, dead end concrete streets that then now you have to go yeah. and bust yeah. open the street yeah, and then yeah. kind of recover it so that the mm -hmm. drain can flow through. <clears throat> yeah. So th those have been a, a big issue for us as well. Now moving on from, from the flooding issue because it's, it's, a, it's a matter of being prepared for any eventuality. Yeah, any eventuality. Um, and what we've seen of recent is where uh, Nemo and Simo, as a matter of fact, have been activated for emergencies that have nothing to do with hurricane or floods. You've seen the mass fires that have been taking place. Um, talk to me about those type of preparations and, and how ready you are uh, if anything like this sort takes place. Mass casualty is, a, is also one of the issues that um, I don't want to say is a probability, but it's something that we are concerned about as well. Yeah, well, all, all emergencies we take into consideration simply because you'll never know when they will happen. Mm -hmm. And so each committee will just tweak more or less the SOPs, the standard operating procedures they mm -hmm. have, to suit whatever emergency arises. Mm -hmm. right? But everybody knows firsthand that whenever they are called upon by the chairman of the city emergency management mm -hmm. organization, then they should respond in kind. Everybody, every committee has its own um, standard operation procedure, procedure mm -hmm. and the, um, the plan just go into effect. So we tweak it to suit like hurricane, fire, tsunami, mm -hmm. you know, everything is done. It's all captured on it's, the Yeah, it's all yeah. captured and, on and the And we speak of so. the 13 committees. So for example, in the event of the, uh, a, a huge fire, you hear Nemo is being organi um, organized and, and, and CMO is being organized as well. Sometimes it's not the full SEMO or the full NEMO, it's just a subcommittee. Mm -hmm. For example, in, uh, where, where fires are concerned, then shelters may have to be open. Yeah. So it's a shelter subcommittee along with relief and supplies mm -hmm. to provide that, that initial and immediate relief to families and people who may have been displaced. Um, where, where we may have a mass casualty incident, for example, the public health and the medical, they may have, have to, to be yeah, mobilized. Yes. Um, a, big, a big issue that has come up at our EOC training was the issue of body bags in the event of a mass casualty event. Where, where, will we, where would we have storage? Mm -hmm. We understand that some of the old district, um, some of the morgues are, are not functioning. They're not, functioning, they're, they're not yeah. working. So those things become an issue and you have to have a plan A and a backup plan B in the event to deal with these issues. Yeah. Probably you share some of the committees with... with That's yeah. it. Go ahead. Some of the committees, um, 
We have the Education, Information, and Communications uh, on Warning Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the people who would flood the airwaves with, um, with advertisements, mm -hmm. uh, let people know when the hurricane is coming or when this will be happening. Whatever event is taking place, these are the persons who would um, put it on the airwaves after getting information and warnings from... And putting on official information. Yeah. And putting on official. So when you hear this, yeah. it's official. Then you have the Search and Rescue and Security Committee. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, after every disaster, some people are missing, so, you know, this kicks in to get. Mm -hmm. Transport and evacuation. This normally happens before the storm yes. and after, right? So these people, so, you know, you have people evacuating from the Keys. Yeah. So we need buses to take them out. This is a transit right. point that's important. Uh, yeah. And then when, when they come here, they know exactly where they'll go yeah. when they go west. And then have the Damage Assessment and Needs Analysis Committee. Yeah. That's the committee that um, the good deputy mayor here chairs. Yeah. You know, they go out. They see the damage. Mm -hmm. They make their assessments and say, okay, this is needed in this area. That is needed in this area. And then Nemo kicks in with the assistant. The other one is this relief and supplies. Mm -hmm. We all know that if you're going to manage shelters, you will need to have mm -hmm. food and uh, what, medicine, basic, basic, what, basic needs. All right? A foreign assistance committee, they normally kick in. Uh, we've had the council responsible already sending out um, press releases to different um, organizations mm -hmm. saying, okay, we'll, we might need this, we might need that, and so on and so yeah. on. Uh, medical care, uh, the deputy manager spoke about it. Human Resource Management Committee, very important. This committee finds people to man the different committees. Mm -hmm. Deployment, uh, yeah. All staff, so they know exactly where they are. Housing and shelter, well, we all know what yeah. that does. Then the mitigation and access. When these trees and so on fall or the, 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 the bridges break, God forbid. We need for clear roads. We need, we need to clear, you know, we need to do all that. Yeah. Uh, and what about the clearing before, this, before the storm or before well, the season? Well, that's what we do on a, on yeah. a daily basis. Yeah. We normally just make sure we maintain. Then you got the restoration of utilities. Very important because we need to see Channel 5, of course. <laughs> and Channel 5 needs to be out there, you know, making sure that the people of Belize uh, are informed. Economic and recovery. And of course, the Environment and Solid Waste uh, Committee, mm -hmm. which I chair, you always have that. Yeah. You always have, um, you know. So, and that's one of the reasons we're having this preparedness fair, yeah. disaster preparedness, because it's easier to meet more people that way yeah. than to probably have a symposium with, with NGOs and officials. Let's meet the people and let's prepare them. Let's give them packets. And that's part of what I wanted to ask in terms of the public awareness, because especially in the city when we talk about evacuation there's always a challenge it's yes. not mandatory you know some we, we haven't been threatened by a major storm or had, haven't been directly hit by a major storm that people take it lightly mm -hmm. it's going to shift direction yeah. last minute mm -hmm. and that's always a challenge yeah. for yeah. your evacuation Agreed. purposes so what about being able to educate people on that particular issue and also Let's not skip over the issue of tsunamis because that's one where you have no time. Sure. It's just instantly getting the message out mm -hmm. and having people Respond. evacuate yeah. properly or move to wherever they need to move. Our, our CMO coordinator has been doing their rounds at schools. Yeah. Um, we find out that when the information is disseminated to, to the kids, children. they take it home to their parents yeah. because yeah. you know kids then are just sponge. Um, we also want to bring awareness that the city has been doing their part, but each family and each individual person mm -hmm. also have to have their family plan in place mm -hmm. in the event of a hurricane. That is what we're used to. Mm -hmm. um, because when we start to drill down on the details, for example, the shut-ins, the elderly, people who may need special needs, yeah. all of those people fall under one of these committees. Yeah. And, and so we have information, we have ways in dealing with these. But it also helps if individual families have their own evacuation routes, if they have their, their family plans that they can put into motion. And that creates um, some efficiencies for the council because mm -hmm. then we can look at those that are most needed and the ones them who really mm -hmm. can't help themselves. Yeah. So we, we, we urge that um, the, the pamphlets, we'll, we'll be having information that will be given out at the fair yeah. mm -hmm. that will be held at the end of this week. And we continue doing our wrongs at school. Nemo also has some pam pamphlets that they give out at mm -hmm. every 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 chance that they have. Yeah, the but Red the Cross has a exactly. Yeah, the Red so, Cross. Yeah. So the yeah. more the more information we get out, the better for us. Mm -hmm. You spoke about tsunami. 
along with the National Fire Service, mm -hmm. because they also play a big part in, in one of the subcommittees that we have in NEMO and SEMO. Um, it has been agreed that we will use their warning systems yeah. to warn residents. Now, that whole program for tsunami is in, in, a, is in a state of change because all you need to do is get away from the coast and try to get to higher, 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 higher yeah. ground. Timely. Um, again, in and a, not go <laughs> line up at the gas station. Yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly. Right? And, and you have maybe 30 minutes, if that much, yeah, to, to for get a out. tsunami warning. Yeah. But that is being developed because that is a new phenomenon yeah. to of our course, area. Of course, yeah. And, 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 and there has and to be a lot more education on right? it. And we also appeal to the good judgment of the populace. You know, don't wait until last. Because the, 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 the big thing with that tsunami threat the last time, everybody was lined up at the gas station. Yeah. Then you're, you're supposed to fill your truck every day, especially now. Oh, well, don't, well, with them oh, please, 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 with the please don't, don't, please don't come to me. Please don't come to me for, for fuel. But just it's just a suggestion. Yeah. Right? Because you, when, so when it's That's time to a move. a good preparedness. Yes. Like, yeah. When it's time to move, you move. Instead of, man, I have to go. Yeah. Then you stay behind the line. Then everybody get jittery. And, you know, and then and all kind of things could happen. E even yes. being on the road after a certain amount of time isn't, uh, isn't very smart yeah. either. Yes. The, the challenge with the tsunami warning I saw is that some people didn't know how to interpret yes, exactly. the fire. Uh, yeah, the alarm. The alarm. The alarm. The alarm. The alarm that they, um, yeah. they didn't know if it was a fire taking place yeah. or why it was happening so yeah. repeatedly. So, so in, in Belize City, for example, one of the, one of the things in the, in the SOP is that the, the traffic unit mm -hmm. now has a fleet of vehicles and they will also be going around trying well, to blare yeah. their alarm yeah, to, yeah. To, make, to, make sure. to make people yes. aware of what's going on. Yeah. Um, we haven't mentioned earthquake as yet, mm -hmm. right? And that is another issue that, that we're looking at. So, like I said, the, when we start to drill down on the details, it, yeah. it, it is very far-reaching because you can always be prepared, but you will never be 100% prepared, prepared, prepared because it, we always, when we look at it, we always look at it that there is something better that we can do and mm -hmm. we can always improve. Mm -hmm. And what about collaboration with other agencies? Because I, I give the example of Red Cross with their emergency plan booklet. It's sure. fantastic. Um, and we feature it every year on the show for that purpose. But what? how much do you work with other agencies? When you talk about your DANA, for example, mm -hmm. um, that's one of the areas where sometimes there's an overlap, same agencies going same places, supplies going same places. Yes. Uh, so how much do you work with everybody else to ensure there's so no at these At these monthly CMO meetings, um, the Red Cross mm -hmm. is invited, Coast Guard, police, there's, there's about 31 collaborating yeah. agencies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so the more, the more of these agencies that come to the meeting, the better because they have the information readily available. Red Cross does not operate within a vacuum. Mm -mm. Um, and they can't even operate without the NEMO, yeah. the National Emergency Management, Management Organization, yeah. saying, you know what, you can go into this area. Yeah. They, they will not go into an area yeah. unless they, they get the go-ahead and, the, and they're all clear. And in some areas that you go into, you may have to take security personnel with you. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is where the Coast Guard, the police, the BDF become important. Yeah. So we collaborate with all these agencies. Um, BAPTA, we, 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 mm -hmm. we look at um, wow. BC, uh, the, the Belize Council for the Visually Impaired mm -hmm. as well, because all these residents have special needs, yes. and we must in, be inclusive of everyone. Mm -hmm. The hospital, for example, KHMH, they have their own evacuation plan. So mm -hmm. that helps, but that has to be incorporated into our NEMA, plan, yeah, and, and then NEMA. that rolls up into the NEMO plan. So we, we, don't work, we don't work in a vacuum, and we don't work in isolation. Mm -hmm. But you can very well appreciate now the collaborating agencies when you have so many moving parts. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's very important that they all know and are in sync in what is going on. Mm -hmm. and, and Deputy, we also have um, UNICEF, yes. who is a very willing partner when it comes to training. Mm -hmm. They provide the resources, they provide the personnel to make sure that the people who they are tr um, teaching get the information that is needed. Yeah. You'd be surprised to know what some of the information we get. Right? You go there and say, man, I, you, you took it for granted. Yeah. But there is a severely the, affected Yes, by there is a the process situations. of doing everything. Yeah. And when these um, facilitators come down and us, uh, you say, okay, good. Yeah. At least we've learned so a lot from, and they're very, very, very much in so tune with us. You have well. all this information, you have the warnings, you have the uh, plans that people need to put in place. I know we don't talk enough about medications, having enough medication for whatever illness you have. You know, uh, uh, if we use the example of Maria in Puerto Rico, you know, one of the challenges was the deaths came after because you didn't yeah, have yeah, access yeah, to yeah, some so of the medical care or medications so that you needed. Yeah. Um, 
So how do you get this information out to the public? How do you ensure that as much as you sit in meetings and coordinate with organizations, that the people, the people who need to know this information, will get access to it? Well, programs like these, yeah. um, and, and the mayor will be fair. the first person to tell yeah. us the fair. Um, and each of these organizations that we collaborate with also have their, their own way of getting the information out in their, in their neck of the woods mm -hmm. as yeah. well. And so our, yeah, our yeah, CMO yeah. coordinator, like I said, has been doing it in schools. That, that covers a wide array of, of, yeah. of families and a wide cross-section of the people that we deal with yeah. and must look out for in the sitting. Yeah. And now you're doing a fair? We're doing this fair yeah, on, on Saturday. Okay. Again, um, it's a fair where we get that um, information sharing. Mm -hmm. um, having families go, go to the fair and um, learn about your first aid kit, learn about your own plan for your own family. Mm -hmm. um, how, what do you put in a, in a, in a um, hurricane, hurricane kit. preparedness kit? kit yeah. mm -hmm. And those type of information will be shared there. It will be jointly with um, NEMA, we have the fire department, the police department, and other agencies there to, um, to, to give out those information as well. All right. So uh, as of now, we have at least the drainage taken care of and multiple plans and teams set up in yeah. the eventuality of any emergency. emergency. I, I have to, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the human resource that, that uh, Councillor and Mayor spoke of is very important because we can have these plans, but if the execution is not there, Mm -hmm. If the manpower and the woman power is not yeah. there <laughs> to man the shelters, to make sure that when the people are coming in, uh, the evacuees from the Keys are Jesus, coming in and right. we don't have people to log them and to tell them to which area, which bus to go to, yeah. then everything yeah. will just fall apart. Yeah. Fall apart. And, and that is, so the human yes. resource, the, the human aspect The execution of the part. plans are yes. well, it's what's yes. most yes. important. And, yes. you know, I think while we talk about emergencies all the time, it's always with the hope that we don't have to yes. put any of these plans into Precise. place. Gentlemen, what we're going to do at this time is go ahead and take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll be shifting gears and focusing on another event that's taking place on Saturday. Super sale. Your super sale. That's what we're talking about after the break. Stay tuned. Okay. Sixty-five years ago, Don Omario started with one bar and a vision to capture the taste of Belize and share it with the world. Realizing that this vision would not be easy, the Perdomo family pulled together and rose to the challenge. In 1995, they became the first exporters of fine Belizean rum. 65 years later, with the oldest distillery in the country, their drive for excellence is as strong as ever, gaining them recognition and awards from around the world. But more than that, their core family values and pride in Belize keeps them giving back. The challenges were many, but the compromises were none. In the pursuit of great taste, Traveler's Liquors has shown the taste of success is sweet indeed. If you have a baby on the way, here is what you need to know about maternity benefit. It includes both an allowance for 14 weeks and a grant which is a lump sum of $300. The basic requirements are, you must be employed, you must have at least 50 paid contributions, and you must have continuous contributions leading up to delivery. To apply, a licensed doctor certifies the expected date of delivery. The employer completes the salary's record. Submit your completed claim form as soon as possible. After giving birth, submit your continuation claim no later than three weeks after delivery. If the mother does not qualify, the father of the child may qualify for the maternity grant. Want to know more about maternity benefit or grant? Visit our website or contact any of our offices to have someone assist you. Also, be sure to visit our Facebook page and give us a like to stay informed. Social Security Board safeguarding you, your family, your future. Buying a car should be a great experience, and St. John's Credit Union wants to make it even better. But we offer more than just great low rates. We make the application process easy and make sure our members get the best service possible. 
At St. John's Credit Union, we offer excellent products backed by exceptional service. So the next time you are buying a new or used vehicle, take advantage of St. John's Credit Union's Drive Forward Auto Loan product. We put the buying power in your hands. Come and drive forward with our auto loans with rates as low as 9% and low or no down payments. Drive forward with St. John's Credit Union. Some restrictions apply. We are back and continuing our conversation uh, with representatives of the Belize City Council. We're joined at this time by Tamara Minto, who's the communications manager for the council. And uh, we're shifting gears, focusing on another event that's taking place this Saturday. And that is your super sale. So let's take a moment to just look back as to uh, the origins of this idea and uh, how it's been going so far. Again, Marlene, the, the Super sale um, was an idea um, born by the council again. Mm -hmm. um, we felt that we wanted to revitalize the downtown area. Mm -hmm. We felt that um, you cannot have a city without a downtown. Yeah. And for some time now, the downtown um, Albert Street, the traditional Albert Street, Regent Street area had been um, depressed. And so we met with some of the store owners, some of the business owners in that neck of the woods, and we were able to come up with an idea of trying to revitalize, having shoppers in Belize, um, having that ability to go into a store and enjoy some savings. And that is where it all sprung up. Um, we, are, we are very optimistic that this will be a long-term and sustainable event. Um, with the new city hall being put smack in the middle of downtown, we felt what better place to be our downtown area than the Albert Street and Regent Street area. Yeah. And that is how the, the super sale um, came about. It's um, we are going into our fifth, fifth, yeah. fifth, super, sale. fifth super sale. Um, this it's one. It's a lot of collaboration with uh, the private sector, and and it's very important you get them all on board. Sure. Um, and that's where you keep on saying that you see your greatest success, that you see people wanting to collaborate on the sale. The, the first one, um, the was to get their buy-in, and yeah. I think now it has been easier because as soon as the date is announced, I think there's a flooding there's of a call flood. that comes in. Definitely. And people want to be a part of it because they understand the benefits. Yeah, and Tamara may I, could, yeah, may I, could give some of the people who may, may I be a little bit modest because this thing was his brainchild. <laughs> and when he mentioned it in our planning process for our uh, manifesto, mm -hmm. everyone gravitated to it and grabbed it. Mm -hmm. um, and now it has become the child mm -hmm. of Miss Minto mm -hmm. to, to nurture it now and to, to grow it even further yes. yeah. under the auspices of the council. No? Well, it's a teenager right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit troublesome. Yeah. No, 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 no. We're in that. We're we're past the infantry stage, and now we're into the teenage stage. But um, it has grown tremendously, and yeah. this um, this super sale being our fifth one, it has um, you, we, the consumer will see the growth. Mm -hmm. We have businesses from Orange Walk, um, mm -hmm. Corazal that have been expressed interest in joining on to the super sale. Um, we decided to open it up due to the, sub the demand yeah. from the businesses across the city and across the country, actually, um, to do little pop-up businesses on the Albert Street area. Oh, so it's growing more into an expo. Yes, De yeah. definitely. So we have um, new businesses coming in down to the downtown area. We have Jador, which will provide graduation dresses this, um, this super sale. Wow. We have That's Grace Kennedy. We have Bowen and Bowen. Mm -hmm. um, we also have um, Carl H. Menzies. We have Sit and Sip with the Pedal Tours will mm -hmm. be out there as well. Um, we also have Heritage Bank. Mm -hmm. um, we have a slew of others, Angeles Press. Well, clearly, if non-downtown businesses mm -hmm. want to come to the downtown sale, um, it means that you're having the type of traffic that they are, they're finding lucrative. What, what kind of numbers are you seeing wow. coming wow. through? We're looking at between anywhere between 5,000 to 10,000 wow. in December. On a one-day sale. In a one-day sale. Mm -hmm. December, we, we, we had 10,000 traffic, mm -hmm. for traffic of consumers. Mm -hmm. And each super sale, we take a survey and inventory. And also, data, yeah. we data, we get data from all the consumers coming in. Because our goal is to improve. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, our goal is to um, provide what the consumers is looking for, what they need. And then we go back to the drawing board. We sit with the businesses and then we kind of revamp on how yeah. can we improve and make it better yes. for the next super sale. So this is what we, this is the feedback that we were getting. They want to see more variety. They mm -hmm. want to see more businesses. Um, so that's why we decided to open Larger it. discounts. Larger discounts. Definitely. Discount. So, so while there are tangible gains, yeah. So that, that the residents mm. and that the consumers have the biggest part and the, the thing that has the most buying is that we're selling an experience mm -hmm. yes you can come out you will see people you will meet people that you haven't met in a long time mm -hmm. the kids can walk around they can run around there's a kid zone there's a food court mm -hmm. um, Albert Street is locked off so you there's the, the free movement of foot traffic mm -hmm. not having to worry about any vehicles coming in and that sort of thing and so the experience is what we're yeah. also selling. So it becomes a pedestrian only area. Yes. Yeah, just for that day. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. And the key thing here too is that we want to ensure that the residents of the city enjoy some benefits of sale, mm -hmm. being able to stretch that dollar. Yeah. Sure. And, and that is why we have opened it up a bit so that they have more variety. They could mm -hmm. see a 20% here, a 50% here, but it's geared at having the city residents being able to stretch their dollar. Yeah. Now, you've, you've spoken before that uh, it, in order to know who's participating, you have to look for the, the blue, blue dot, dot, right? Yes. Um, that was one of, in our, in our initial uh, super sale, we realized that not all of the stores um, are able to give that 20%, mm -hmm. at least 20% discount. So the consumer had a hard time identifying which were the participating stores. Yeah. So we decided to have an identifier, which is the blue dot that says big super sale. Mm -hmm. And those are identified on the outside of the stores. Um, so the consumers easily identify that these are the participating stores. So should you go into a, a business that doesn't have the super sales yeah. blue dot logo, then you cannot expect to find the super sale discount that yeah. we are. Promoting. Because the super sale range is 20% or more. Yes. In order to participate into yeah. the super sale, you have to provide at least 20% discount, 20% um, and up. So anywhere between 20 to 50%. Yeah. And this super sale, we have um, themed it the Father's Day edition. 50% off? Where do we go for that one? <laughs> Some stores they do. They Some stores Some do it. Stores yeah, do yeah, it. I mean, you just have yeah. to look for it. You yes. have to really go out. Yeah. It's not every store, but you, you do find some stores um, um, offering 50%. In the, in, the initial, um, in the initial edition of the super sale, in one of the meetings, mm -hmm. the mayor told the business owners, because they will have to take ownership on it. Mm -hmm. If a consumer, if a customer goes into your shop and does not get any type of discount, then you are the one that have failed, not us. Mm -hmm. Because we've, we've, we've generated the environment for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. uh, we've locked off the street. We've, we've put our city council people, mm -hmm. give them <laughs> some more responsibilities yeah. um, to get the word out. But you have to be the one that ensure yeah. that the customer comes in and feels as if though that they got a bargain. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, are you encouraged by the continued interest or are people oh, starting to feel? No, the interest oh. have been there. Um, whenever we call meeting with the store owners in that area, uh, we always have great attendance and they are always receptive to us. Mm -hmm. um, they are always, always buying to us. The thing here, I always insist on them, listen, we can sit here and do nothing and let our Chetamal. Albert Street and everybody deviate to Chetamal, or we can get together and fight this mm -hmm. and let this thing work for us. You, you, you could sit here and say, make me feel, but I don't believe in a feel, so let us get it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that we're not losing. We're not losing con um, businesses on the super sale, we're gaining. Mm -hmm. um, we have businesses from, um, that has been supporting us from the onset. We have Marisco, we have Brody's, we have um, Dabari, we have Mikado. Um, those Hofius, are just, yeah. Hofius, those are just a few of the businesses that have been with us from the onset. Mm -hmm. And they continue to support each, each month because they do see the value and they do see the, the, um, the growth that the super sale is, is and, having. And, and for some businesses, that, that one Saturday, the volume that comes in on that one Saturday yes. allows them to keep their doors open yeah. for, the, for, for when, yes. there, when there's a Definitely. slow period. Or when there's, and, and they tell us, they say, listen, we've seen the volumes. We, we, you're preaching to the choir. We just want mm -hmm. to know how we can yeah. sustain it. Yeah. No, and we know the challenges in, in downtown, which is, I think, pretty much in the city or main pedestrian er mm -hmm. area. Yeah. Um, where things have slowed down from what we used to know sure. before. 
Um, and the bigger issue here is because of security. And so I want to talk to you about how you take consideration for that um, on a day like Saturday where you have your super sale and you have a mass number of persons. You're not at the police department, but you do have to coordinate with them yeah. and ensure that people are safe and continue to feel safe. We continue to, to have a great working relationship with the commissioner. Um, not that um, we have not had any incident yeah. at any of our super sale. Um, people feel safe in the zone. We have e e even integrated um, um, some sporting events in the in the zone, which mm -hmm. which attracts people from different from different neck of the woods, mm -hmm. and, and and we have not had any incidents. And so we continue to work closely with the police department um, to ensure that security is there for all all the visitors to that area. We have our traffic officers for mm -hmm. the flow of traffic. We have some special constables out there. Yeah. Um, but you like everyone like every other belizean want to go to somewhere you want to go somewhere where you feel safe to mm -hmm. spend your money and that is the environment that we want to create so yeah. yes there there's always an uh the possibility that that may be happening yeah. but we're hoping that the experience that we sell the positivity that is mm -hmm. surrounding that super sales zone also extends out to the people who want to come in and say you know what i just want to stretch my dollar I want to enjoy it. I want to have my, my, my family to run around to get yeah. food because the success stories are a lot of the small yeah. business yes. and the, um, yeah. what we would call and the food peddlers that, yeah. that, that set yes. up there so on that day. And that's what I wanted to ask. I hear the big businesses, you, you speak of them, yeah. but are the small vendors oh, buying course. on? Yeah. Of course, they come out each day. Uh, obviously, they don't have store names, so yeah. I can't tell you the, the, yeah. the little vendor with the store name, but we have vendors that have also been loyal to us and, yeah. and have also been selling um, used clothing, selling sneakers mm -hmm. for the kids. Alex Sanka um, with, with exactly, his painting. With the oh, painting. Nice. Yes, he's been out um, there setting so up we great, have, great. We have small businesses is, is what makes up the street. Yeah. You, could get your, you could get your so rice and beans, your definitely. tacos. We even got cashew and this We one. have in cashew. I'm first. saying cashew first. You bring a crooked tree cashew first. We have, we have, a, we have about six boots from, from crooked tree yes. coming out. And yes. um, we're going to have a... Um, so it, the small vendors is what makes up yeah the the street fair and then um the, the 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 larger businesses they will come out a little bit on the curbside yeah but they will have mainly their discounts in the and stores. you'll have your health fair taking place Def in, the in the in the battlefield park so it's going to be a, two events taking place yes, at the, the same the, time the nemo the nemo fair will have yes. people out there giving out mm -hmm. information yeah. and that sort of thing okay. um but but we what's a steal that you've heard of so far give us the scoop where do people have to go to get a good deal Father's wow. Day is coming up. Before that, we have different. We have different <laughs> aspects. We have Simo giving you disaster uh -huh. preparedness kits. You go to Hofius to get your disaster preparedness kit um, content. Okay. At discounted rate. Um, Brody's your, always mm -hmm. gives, and Mikado yeah. always gives great discount. Debari. Yeah. Debari as well. Yeah. Um, Angela's Press is coming out. Madisco gets great discounts. Mm -hmm. I and mean, Boeing will be here. This and Boeing and Boeing will be here. They're actually selling cases oh. at discounted rates. Um, they're doing That's a good gift for that. Yeah. Red stripes. Hey, that, red yeah. stripe and um, a bear for that that is good. <laughs> <laughs> so you just made it easy for your family just now. <laughs> So, I mean, it's a great Father's Day edition, and it's a great family um, environment, yeah. and I think you can get something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like I said, graduation is coming up. Jadora is coming out with a slew of dresses, of graduation dresses. Yeah. So, you have that. There's something for everyone. It's just a matter of what you're looking for. So, what time does the sale start? Stores open at 8. Okay. The, the, the street fair actually opens at 10, but okay. from 8 o'clock, the stores are open. And, right. and stores won't close unless the last customer until the last customer Definitely. leaves. Definitely. <laughs> um, so we have, I think we have a cutoff at five or five, six. Yeah. But they, but they, they continue. Should... I think the first one, some stores went past eight thirty nine yes. in the yeah. night. Wow. That they were open because of the, the volume of traffic that they Definitely. had. Definitely. That's right. one Christmas. So yeah. downtown yeah. Belize City. That's where the super That's sale is the going to be. be. Uh, <laughs> the roads will be shut off at what time? The streets will be shut off at what time? From, um, eight o'clock yeah. in, in the morning. In the All morning. right. So and people we have parking. We have yeah. parking facilities behind the court, and mm -hmm. we use the Romax parking lot as well. Right. But the parallel streets, the, the perpendicular streets, will be open, so you can actually cross over mm -hmm. to okay. get to the to the parking lot on Regent Street and also on the downtown plaza. All right. Well, thank you for coming in and giving us the update on your latest super sale. Can I just say that we want to thank the businesses for yes. supporting, yeah. but also the city council staff mm -hmm. who work 
an exorbitant amount of hours on the super <laughs> sale planning and, and the execution because what you see out there is a finished product yeah but it takes a lot yes, that goes into it so we want them yeah all right yeah. Well, thank you for coming in. You Thanks. gave us uh, you an us. update as to the preparedness for emergency and then also uh, where you can stretch your dollar this weekend. Definitely. All right. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the commemoration of World No Tobacco Day. So stay tuned.